Welcome to Newsmax TV. I'm Kathleen Walter. With us now from Oxford, Mississippi, is University of Mississippi law professor Ron Reichleck. He's just co-authored a brand new book with the highest ranking Soviet bloc intelligence official ever to defect to the West, Lieutenant General Ian Pasepa. Their book is called Disinformation. Former spy chief reveals secret strategies for undermining freedom, attacking religion, and promoting terrorism. And professor, it's good to have you with us today. Thank you, Kathleen. Happy to be here. Well, first off, we should point out that your co-author, General Pasepa, couldn't be with us for the interview because he's in the Witness Protection Program. Uh, I'm going to ask you about the book in more detail in a second. But first, what, if any, parallels do you see between General Pasepa's defection and revelation of spy tactics to the CIA and former NSA contractor Edward Snowden's revelations about the NSA's PRISM surveillance program? Well, that's an excellent question. It's clear Pachepa came to the United States and gave us many secrets, a lot of information about what was going on in the Soviet Union and the Soviet bloc at that time. Now, what Snowden has revealed, we don't fully know yet, but I think we have to be very concerned about that and, and find out all the information before we hail him as a hero, as some people seem ready to do right away. I mean, I'm very worried about what he's done. Mm -hmm. The United States says there is clear legal basis for Russia to hand over Edward Snowden for extradition. Moscow is resisting. Now, in the book, you write about the former Soviet Union being transformed into the first intelligence dictatorship in history. Based on your inside knowledge, how do you see Russian intelligence pursuing Edward Snowden, and how could he be useful to Russian intelligence? Well, we don't know what secret Snowden has. I mean, and he may turn over a, you know, a, a great deal of information, or he may have useless information. Uh, it, 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 that's, you know, we're outsiders trying to evaluate that. What I do know with a high degree of certainty is that Putin and the Russian officials are very interested in what he has. They want to talk to him. They'll make deals with him. They don't want to turn him back to the United States until they've had a chance to talk to him. Uh, you know, Putin is a former KGB officer. He's put KGB, former KGB guys, around him, uh, running modern Russia today. And uh, they recognize when they've got something valuable, uh, you, you know, in their back pocket. Do you see the tussle between these two nations over Edward Snowden reviving Cold War sentiments? I think it's more revealing Cold War difficulties. I, I, I do believe that we went through a brief period where we thought, you know, the Berlin Wall was down, the Soviet Union split up, things were going to be good, and we're going to have this peace dividend in our budget. We recognize now that those things have all fallen apart, that tensions exist with Russia, that we have more tension around the world than ever before, and we have to be prepared to deal with those matters. All right, let's turn to the book. You and General Pachepa expose the exotic, widely misunderstood, but very influential realm of the Russian-born science of disinformation. What is the science of disinformation? Disinformation is planting a false idea in an enemy camp, uh, but may, not letting it know, not let people know where it came from. So, for instance, if Putin were today to come out and say to, something to the United States and that, that made us question uh, American values. We would say, well, that's Putin, or that's an enemy, or that, that's, that, that's something that comes from afar, and we distrust it. But if you can get folks from Washington, D.C. to spread those messages, false though they may be, we tend to trust it because it comes from inside. So you cultivate ideas from inside the nation to undercut the values of that nation. And that's what we've seen in the United States. Can you give us some specific examples of how this science of disinformation was effectively used against the United States? Well, uh, you know, one of the things, I think the big story, I suppose, uh, from the book is how uh, inside the Kremlin they developed the idea that if we can foment uh, Islamic anti-Semitism, if we can convince the people in the Middle East that the United States Congress is essentially a Jewish fiefdom that is trying to spread uh, Judaism throughout the Middle East and throughout Europe, and we can create hatred uh, against the United States in the Arab nations and cause and, and, and show them how to how to affect terrorism and how to uh, uh, capture planes and and do things like that. Uh, the Soviet Union figured out they could actually create a new enemy against the United States, and that's what they did by 
implanting uh, anti-Semitism by taking the pre protocols of the elders of Zion, a discredited forgery that's highly anti-Semitic, but spreading that throughout the Middle East to develop this kind of hatred. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're seeing today. It, it, what we see today is a direct outgrowth of that kind of activity. And what can you tell us about how the world came to believe that the U.S. government itself masterminded the assassination of President John F. Kennedy? Well, immediately after the assassination of Kennedy, of course, you know, the United States is, is in an uproar. You know, where do we look? What are we going to do? President Johnson wanted it resolved quickly. The Warren Commission tried to act very quickly. The Soviet Union was aware that if you look at the pieces, fingers pointed at, if not them, at least communism perhaps in Cuba. And uh, our book does not argue that the Soviet Union was behind the assassination itself, that it may have had some fingerprints on some stuff. But very quickly, the Soviet Union got into promoting the idea that it was a CIA plot uh, to try to finance authors, finance speakers, get that idea out there so that people start questioning uh, the United States government instead of looking at the Soviet Union. And what about the defamatory attacks on American soldiers that John Kerry made before Congress uh, upon his return from Vietnam, charges that were later discredited and repudiated? They were identical to a contemporaneous KGB disinformation campaign concocted to turn Americans against their own leaders. What does this tell us about John Kerry? Well, it, it tells us that Kerry fell for Soviet disinformation. He believed what he heard. He accurately reported what he heard. I mean, I, I think he believed what he said. He believed that American soldiers committed these atrocities, but those atrocities were the invention of Soviet disinformation. So he bought into the disinformation. He spread it. He, he became a pawn of Soviet disinformation. Last question for you, Professor. You write in the book that disinformation is still very much alive in the age of Obama and that it remains a powerful engine in the ongoing socialist transformation of America. Can you give us some examples? Well, if you look at communist nations, what they do is they elevate the leader. They sing songs of praise to the leader. They name churches and, and schools and streets uh, after the leader. The leader gets the authority, begins making laws, uh, not going through the legislative process, appointing czars, using that executive authority to push a political agenda, a leftist political agenda. And that's what we see today coming out of Washington, D.C. All right. Again, the book is called Disinformation, written by Ian Pachepa and Professor Ronald Reichlack. Professor, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Kathleen. And thank you for watching Newsmax TV.